Okay, the, we're continuing on the personalized track and now we're going with Dr. Matthias Magdowski from Otto van Gerich University in Magdeburg. And Dr. Magdowski is responsible for both fundamentals of electrical engineering and also electromagnetic compatibility. He enjoys dealing with these alternative teaching methods and also uh, learning methods, sorry, which is why we're curious to hear more about his view on personalized tasks and as well as this anonymous peer feedback. So whenever you're ready, Dr. Mandowski. Yeah, thanks for the kind introduction. Thanks for the invitation to this very nice and interesting event. Um, as said, I would like to speak about some experiences that we did with this personalized tasks and with um, anonymous peer review or peer feedback um, with our students. And before we really dive into the topic, I would uh, have a short poll or a short survey um, just for me, it would be interesting to see um, from which field the audience uh, or the attendees are from. So there should be a poll somewhere showing up on the platform. And I will also open up the chat here with me so that I can see the results. And so please feel free to, um, to answer this question. And I think we will come back to the results a little later because of the delay between the Zoom meeting and uh, the stream. So, so I will continue and start with a short disclaimer. Uh, I'm not a didact. Uh, everything I did with didactics is, is like, I, I, I learned myself, I'm an engineer uh, by heart. And so everything that I tell is maybe a little bit from the engineering point of view. Um, if you want to have the slides, uh, I can send them to you. I think I also already uh, uploaded them to the event website. Uh, there will be a recording. And uh, if, you, if you have questions, please feel free to ask questions in between into this Q&A chat, and then we will come back to the questions at the end of the talk. So um, after this short uh, introduction, I will explain. Oh, and there, there I get the results from the poll. So, um, oh, there are only very few people from mathematics, uh, about a quarter from education, and... Um, most people from something else, whatever this is. Okay, interesting. So, so not, not too many mathematicians and, and engineers here, but it's totally okay for me. But then I don't have to go into too much details. So I would like to explain why we all do this. So what is the motivation for us? Then I will show you how a typical ta task looks like. If, if you are not an engineer or uh, you, you might have not heard of nodal analysis, but it's, it's, it's not too important just that you get an idea. Uh, then, of course, I will show you how we implement this into feedback fruits and some results, what has came out of it, uh, what, what do the students say about it, and so on. So, um, to start with a short motivation, um, I have another poll or I have another survey, and um, you should get the link to this Menti survey um, from Monica in the chat on the platform, or if you're quick and have your cell phone readily available, you, you may also scan this QR code um, and, and, and get to this poll. And I would like to know, and again, I will come back to your um, answers later, what would you see from your personal point of view as the biggest benefit or let's say the most interesting advantage of uh, peer uh, feedback or peer-reviewed assessment um, in, in a fundamentalist course. Okay, so for us, it's a little bit that in, I don't know if it's a German university thing, but we have kind of very traditional performance assessments. Um, students are sent into room, they got a paper and a pen and maybe a calculator, and then they have to solve very complicated engineering tasks without the help of a computer, without the help of the internet. And I would say in the daily working life, the demands are a little difficult. Um, uh, co-workers need to cooperate and collaborate and communicate on, on difficult engineering problems. And of course, they have to be able to solve something on their own, but they also have to be able to develop solutions together. So we would have to have some kind of tasks um, where students can can let's say help each other a little bit or can can jointly work on these problems um, and discuss their different approaches to find a solution. Then there are like classical e-learning tasks. You get a task, uh, you, need to you, you need to find a solution. And at the end, you need to fill in, let's say a number uh, into some form field and maybe a unit, and then you get a, a right or wrong. But 
only the result is checked, not really the process how you got to this result. And so what's kind of traditional in, in, in our fundamentals course on electrical engineering is that students write handwritten solutions. So here's a handwritten solution by myself. As you can see, it's in German. I'm, I'm talking about German classes. Um, you, you see some formulas and it's quite easy to write formulas by hand, to draw schematics, to draw, draw um, diagrams, circuit schematics, and so on. Um, also like, like plots like this. Um, and the, the advantage of these handwritten solutions is that it's visible to see the process, the approach, um, the, the, the formulism, what, what, what students did on a mathematical way uh, to solve these engineering problems. And you can see um, typical student misconceptions that you would not get just from this um, putting a number into some form field at the end. Here's another example, uh, if you're not from the engineering sciences, but it's okay. So. Uh, our idea was to have this personalized tasks with handwritten solutions uh, because they are quite authentic. It's, it's easy to write on formulas, plot schematics, and so on. If these tasks are personalized, students cannot plagiarize from each other. Still, they can help each other. And at the end, we don't want to have the effort in uh, checking and reviewing all this stuff. So the students should be able to do a peer review by themselves. And then uh, we don't want to have uh, red tape and a lot of paperwork. So everything should happen um, online. So we are using a Moodle platform in Magdeburg and we're using feedback fruits and we are also using email uh, to send out these personalized tasks. So, and then I've, I've drawn some um, like flow chart how this works. So the students register in the Moodle. Then I have a MATLAB program that creates this task using LaTeX. They are saved as a PDF file and send via email to the students and the corresponding sample solutions for the peer review, they are saved into a folder. Um, and if the, um, the deadline is over, I upload them from a folder to a web server. Um, students submit their own solution to a Moodle. Then there's uh, the peer feedback or peer review pl plugin from Feedback Fruits and students um, get and, and be, are able to see the, the solutions from their peers and they can access the corresponding uh, also personalized sample solutions using a QR code on, on the task sheet and do the review. And then they give some feedback, um, score the, the solutions, uh, upload the results back to a Moodle. And um, then students can see their received feedback. They can also write a reflection, which is very interesting for me to read these reflections of the students, what they learn from the task and so on. Uh, they can uh, later on also access their own sample solution and their, their score or their grade will be saved into a score list. And we don't use this for the final grade, but it's like a, um, they, they need to get a certain score over the whole semester to be able to register for the exam and take part in the exam. So, and this slide should remind me to get back to the survey. So I will show your results and hopefully you can also see them. And I will maybe enlarge it a little bit. So uh, what do you see as the biggest advantage of uh, peer reviewed assessment? Um, less work for the instructor. This was also some motivation for us. Uh, different perspectives, um, critical thinking, and a critical mindset. Okay, very, very interesting, very interesting ideas. Um, Thanks for this. I will, I will later include this also into my slides and maybe upload an updated version. So now let's have a very short and very brief look on how such a typical task looks like. So usually the students get the same task because at the end it should be somewhat comparable. So the task might look like this. Um, do some analysis on a network, calculate some stuff, set up some equation system, insert values, calculate a solution. And, and th there are different points. And then the idea is for the personalization that each student gets a different circuit schematic. And I generate them based on the matriculation number. So every number generates a different circuit schematic, but the same number will generate the same circuit schematic again. So I can regenerate them if something fails, let's say. So 
a student with this number would get this circuit schematic and another student would get this one and another student would get this one and another student would get this one and so on and so on. Um, and they are all somehow similar <laughs> and, and different enough so that every student has to think about um, an independent solution on his own, but still they can uh, like, like help each other and, and discuss their solutions. And as said, then I can also generate the corresponding sample solutions. And this is just, just a very short part of it. But you can see that for every student, it's, it's um, an equation system with a three by three or with three unknowns, three equations. So the effort for every student is the same, but still every student uh, gets kind of a different um, system of equations and, and has to solve in, has to find an individual solution. So then um, I have another poll for you. And now at this point, I would like to know, um, could you think of similar personalized or individualized or randomized tasks um, for your field of teaching? Uh, where, wherever you come from, medicine, languages, um, or yeah, if you are just from, from higher education. Um, and you should see the poll on the event website. And um, yeah, if, if your answers uh, appear in the chat, I will, I will come back to them. Uh, so thank you already for, for participating in the poll. So now let's come to the point how this is implemented in Feedback Fruits. Um, so as said, we are using a Moodle system, a Moodle learning management system for our whole university in Magdeburg. Um, and so there um, you have these different activities and you, you choose the external tool. Um, and then there is uh, feedback fruits here. I, I was only, it was only possible for me to make screenshots with, with German labels, but then as, as a tool, you find feedback fruits, you can include this in your Moodle system very easily. And you can select this peer review uh, plug in or the peer review functionality. And in the first step, you have to set it up a little bit. Um, and okay, uh, we, we, we don't have the results from the, from the, from the other poll yet. No, now, now we have them. Um, so I'm, <laughs> I'm already asking you for the next poll, but the, um, the results of the previous poll said, um, maybe I go back to this because I think you see the poll on the platform. Um, so just very few people said yes, immediately many. Uh, most people said yes, some or yes, but uh, I have to think about it a little bit. And at least no one said no, how, no way. Um, so every one of you would, would more or less have some idea on how to, how to implement this in your field. Okay, so um, yeah, we, we will see what, what learning management system you're using or which is what is popular at other universities. Mm, so what is quite nice for me is that th there's a very, very um, streamlined process and you get a very good overview over this activity. Um, here it, when I made the screenshots, not too many students registered. Now it shows something like, I don't know, 80 of 130 students participated and comp uh, completed this. Um, and, and of course, the, the rate drops a little bit over the semester. And then students get their individualized task sheets via email. We use a Gmail account for this. And if they have questions, they can send me an email um, with their questions. But usually, they, they, they don't have too many questions related to this. And if yes, they ask me it during the lecture or during some, um, some seminars. Um, then there is... Um, yeah, a field where you see all the submissions of the students, you can set a deadline and then you can see how many students submitted at which time and so on. You can, you can also, um, of course, check their submissions and you can check um, in the next field, which student already sent some feedback for, for the other students. And usually for me uh, or for our activity, they have a week to submit their own solution and then they have another week to do the peer review and then they have another week to do the reflection and to check their reviews. Okay, and there are the results from the poll. So not too many people are using Moodle, most are using Canvas, interesting. Okay, I, I have no clue about Canvas. I've never used this before, but I think it's 
may, maybe not too different. If you know one learning management system, you know them all, right? Okay, um, then you can see how the students received and, and checked the, their, the feedback that they got for their own submission. And then I said, the very interesting point is that, um, and I've, I've not done this before when I, when I used a different system to do this peer feedback and peer review activity, students can write a reflection, what they have learned, what they found difficult, what they found easy. Um, and it's, it's, sometimes it's really, really interesting and really also improves me, uh, um, uh, helps me to improve the lecture and the course later on. Um, to read these reflections of the students. And then, of course, the final thing is that um, students and I blurred their names here then get a score uh, for the, the certain sub activities within this peer review task. And I, I will go uh, through this quite quickly. If you, if you edit this, it's also from my point of view, a very good and very streamlined process, uh, very intuitive to use, where you set up the deadline and how many students should review each other and so on. And if they should be able to see if it's anonymous or if it's, um, it's, if it's a not blind peer review and so on. Uh, you can set up different criteria for, for the scoring, uh, which is very flexible for the tasks that we have. Um, yeah. and, and um, for the even if the the, um, the the platform is in English, of course, I can also set up German instructions for our German students. Um, and also, the grading at the end can be set very flexible, um, and so that students also, for example, get some score just for that they hand in their submission or that they do the peer review and so on. And the corresponding sample solution. Um, I, as already said, distribute via a QR code. So I generate a QR code as set in, in, in LaTeX, uh, put this on a PDF file, and then um, upload the sample solutions to one of our web servers and students are then able to access them after, after the submission deadline, of course. So let's come to some conclusions. Um, a typical cycle, and we do six of these cycles per semester, is that I send the tasks to about 200 students in our course, then maybe about 100 of them respond and submit a solution. And then uh, typically you, you lose some students who don't do the peer review, but then they also do not get too many points for their own solution. So I would say this is a very good activation of the students um, and a very good preparation for the final exam without doing like teaching to the test. Um, one problem that we still have is that sometimes the, yeah, the image quality of the scanned or photographed solutions is not too good, as you can see here in these examples. Um, and here I have a last survey for you. So what would you see as the biggest obstacle in using uh, or to, to use peer review in one of your courses? And... Um, you should see the link once again in the chat. And if you are quick and have your cell phone readily available, you might be also able to scan this QR code here once again. Um, and I will, I will just continue with my presentation and come back to this results later. So what, what I would um, like to do with the students um, is to have like a, like a round table discussions with students and discuss them uh, these Ta uh, the, these, these questions with, with the students uh, to get more feedback. So I talked to some students, but I did not really did the, the, the too detailed uh, like evaluation of this concept. Um, so for example, how do students assess the fairness of this uh, mutual peer review and how, how students um, think about the technical handling using the Moodle platform and the fear, peat, uh, fear, fear um, feedback fruits peer review plugin. Um, and if, they, if, if the procedure is transparent enough for them and so on. Um, if you want to have, or if you want to get more detailed information about what I've tried to explain you very briefly, uh, there's a, um, a German lightning talk about this. There's also some, some um, English paper um, and you can find the digital object identifier in the slides. And there's also some FAQ, but if I remember correctly, it's also in German on SlideShare. 
and sometimes I Twitter about this, but also on our German account, um, yeah, about personalized tasks. But we have done this 10 semesters so far. Um, and as you can see, quite a high number of students participated. And um, our overall experience with this is, is very, very good. So now let's come back to your uh, comments. Um, of course, it needs some time to implement this. Um, of course, you, at, especially at the beginning of the semester, you really have to explain the students how to do this peer review. Um, I would not say that you oversee the progress made by the students because I, I also often check in into this plugin and see, okay, what did they submit? Uh, how does the review work? Students ask me questions via email. Can you check this? Can you check this? I'm not sure about how to, how to grade this. And then I, um, I take a look in there. Um, okay, students not too skilled at review. And okay, responsibility. Um, yeah, you, 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 I think you in, have to invest some time into, into the course to do this, but on the long run, I would say you save some time. Okay, so thank you very much um, for, for your time. And there's already the first question in the chat and feel yes. free to ask, to ask more questions into the chat. I will shortly hand back to Helena. Yeah. Okay. So or should Matthias, I directly I think continue the, with the question? Yes, I think we can continue with the question. So how do you incentivize students to share both quality and quantity peer feedback? Um, so first thing that we say to the students is that you also learn something uh, by doing this peer review and peer feedback because you, you have to think into a different solution. And um, students really like to do this because then they also see, oh, it was not only me who struggled with solving this task. Also, also other students were not able um, to write down a correct solution directly and they corrected something here and they corrected something there and then they recalculated something and it finally fitted. Um, and so what, what we see also by doing some, some learning analytics, I've not included uh, the diagrams here in, into, the, um, into the slides, but maybe I can shortly try to draw it here on, um, in, in, on the Zoom whiteboard. Um, so if, if this is the time, and this is, let's say, the number of submissions, and here somewhere is the deadline, then during the submission, it usually looks like this, that for the whole week, no one will submit, no one will submit, no one, some people submit some days before. And shortly, shortly, the deadline is the ultimate inspiration. And then the number of submissions drastically increases uh, really, really shortly before the deadline. So this is, yes. this is the submission. <laughs> Uh, what's quite interesting is that for the, for the review, the curve looks more straight. So if students see, okay, there now we are able to do the, the review and we get some message here, please, please do the review, then they, they do it more like this. It, it maybe goes up a little bit shortly before the deadline, but in a usual semester week, it looks like this. And then what was quite interesting, really in the hard times of the pandemic, uh, the curve more looked like this, that there were like the early responders who said, I'm, I'm sitting at home, I have nothing to do. Uh, then they, they did it directly, nothing happened over the whole week. And then it, it went up um, shortly before the deadline once again. Yes, I think we can all relate to this and we've all yeah. seen this, especially with uh, the students indeed at the start of the pandemic trying to find with things to do because suddenly they have all this time but not that much on their hands anymore because they're at home so we indeed also spoke to other educators who showed us that suddenly students were doing a lot more work prior to the deadline than usual um another question that i have for you is how um how do you use the rubrics and what type of rubrics do you use in order to navigate students in their feedback process um, we always only use, let me go back to the slide. Where do we have it here? Um, I, I only use very, let's say very simple rubrics because the points that they should give um, for the certain subtasks of, of the solution, they are written in our sample solution sheet. 
Um, so they, they see the formula should look like this or the schematic or the diagram, the plot should look like this. If it looks like this, let's say give, give two points. If, if it is partly wrong and looks like this, give one point. Other typical errors would look like this and then you give like, like these and these points. And so um, the, the rubric then in, in the peer feedback plugin uh, or feedback fruit plugin is, is just, okay, subtask A, how many points would you get? But, but what each point means is written in the PDF file because it's quite complicated. I mean, we have lots of formulas and we have all these schematics and um, that's why I do all this stuff and later I put it in a PDF and then I have no trouble that everything is displayed correctly on each uh, mobile device and does not depend on the browser that you use and so on. But in general, the experience with the peer feedback is very good. Uh, students grade each other in the way that they would also like to be graded. So they, they don't um, for no reason give each other, uh, everyone 100% of the points and they are also not mm -hmm. like nitpicking and say, hey, but this is a little bit wrong and you mm -hmm. should have done like this. <laughs> and and by, by taking the average of, of two of the score of two or three reviewers, it's always um, a, a quite valid result that you get. Definitely. I think we, we also all recognize that. Thank you so much. It's amazing to see how you have incorporated these different methods uh, to optimi optimize for personalized tasks and having that peer-to-peer -peer learning more, more and more throughout the courses. Also for the more exact uh, subject. So thank you again, Matthias. I can see that your ideas and your passion also have gotten you that best lecturer award. So it's a lot to see, uh, a lot of fun to see also the engagement that we got in the chat um, with the audience and the different questions that they have posed.